Welcome to the Volleyball in the Curriculum section. I am Tim Latcham. I am a SSCO for the Timmouth area. I work in TCS, Exeter Road, in secondary school. And volleyball has been pretty much my sport for about 12 years. I started after school one day because I had a spare Monday. And then I've literally carried it on through playing at a high level and also coaching at high levels as well been very lucky to take uh, students through national levels and also work in a team that worked with international athletes. It is a sport that isn't with the traditional, it doesn't go with the football, it doesn't go with the rugby and it's quite hard to transfer but it does fit into the net wall game category and I'd just like to say why it should be included in a primary setting. So a few reasons why it should be added into your curriculum. First of all, it's non-contact. That's really good for those students who really don't like invasive games. They like their own time to do things and they can work still in teams, but without that threat of contact. Also, everyone starts at the same point. There's not often many uh, children who start in primary school who know how to play volleyball. We might, you might have played in the garden, you might have played down the park, but it's actually a really good time to assess progress in students. It is easy to adapt for uh, all learners as you can see in the picture you have got uh, sitting volleyball and that has been adapted using the bench. Sitting volleyball is really really good it is part of the Paralympic program but also it helps increase uh, core strength and the skills are pretty much exactly the same and it's really actually very tiring. So what you can get there is a lot of progress and a lot of teamwork. Um, it develops all your fundamental skills, physical literary movement, which is running, jumping, throwing and catching. Um, obviously, you can say that about any sport, but it's really important that those uh, skills are getting developed, going through your early years and your key stage ones and your key stage twos. Um, there are many clubs around the areas where you've got extra area, you've got uh, down Plymouth and you've also got in North Devon lots of outside clubs they can then progress into where they have junior sections there are lots of tournaments and actually it's there is a lot of support from these clubs to make sure that they can be the best players they can be uh, it takes it away from traditional sports as we suggested earlier it's part of the school games program so whatever you do you can always make sure anyone who's showing a bit of talent or even if you just want to do it as a tournament for students you can get them involved in the school game program and finally it is an all year round sport so you can do it indoors using badminton nets you can do it without a net if you want to you can just practice the skills you can do it outdoors using some outdoor netting but also again with just sort of like a keep the balloon off the floor exercise you can practice all the skills. It's often easy to think that how the sport will benefit the teachers and the school, but also we need to understand how it benefits those students. We've gone through that. It develops the fundamental physical literacy skills. But the most important thing that we need to think about is the communication skills, teamwork and the leadership skills. Because volleyball isn't your traditional game, and actually you will have smaller teams, it allows some students to shine a lot easier because they are able to be part of a small team where they will have an identity. So leaders spring up for people that you'd never actually expect to. Um, it's high intensity but allows breaks. Now this is really good because each point normally lasts only a few seconds, maybe up to about 30 seconds at the very most when everyone is on their point. But the breaks allow the lesson to flow really easily. It allows students time to work hard and then relax, wait for the next serve and then go again. Uh, it's easy to have success. So most of volleyball especially in primary school, it's a variation of a catch-throw game. Yes, you'll teach the proper technique. Yes, you'll have skills in isolation. But as soon as we put it into a game, uh, the regulations state that most of it is going to be catch-throw. 
So actually success is quite easy to be seen. Small sided games as we touched on too, you've got 1v1s, 2v2s, you might go on to 3v3s and 4v4s when you get into year 5 and 6. Obviously the more people you add to the games, the harder it gets. So you as teachers know when to change it up and when to uh, put uh, more students into the game. Sometimes your hand can be forced because of the space you are in as well. Do not worry because you can actually use students as referees quite easily because the rules are relatively simple. Don't go into all the nicky picky stuff of it all. If it's in the court, it's in. If it's out the court, it's out. If you touch the net, you've touched the net. Um, it can be easily adapted for those physical disabilities. I have been lucky enough to work with some incredible coaches and teachers who have made sure that volleyball is fully inclusive. I have seen uh, children who are in wheelchairs become setters in volleyball. I have seen students on crutches, students missing limbs, and also when you think educational needs, it's very good because it's not contact and it tends to be a lot quieter game as well. Um, sitting volleyball promotes inclusivity. Um, don't worry about having to do normal volleyball when you could actually do sitting volleyball as your unit. Sitting volleyball is quite good as well because as a behaviour management tree, you know, they're in a court, they're all sat down and actually they can't move very far once they're sat down. It's a hard game in physical terms but the skills themselves lend to it being easier plus the six aside and the court is quite small so success can be had quite well. Obviously, uh, equipment always uh, lends a hand in whether you decide to do a new sport or anything like that. Now, yes, you might have to buy some new soft touch volleyballs. There are certain things you can do to adapt around that. If you have sponge balls, anything like that, you can adapt it. Also, I have worked quite a few times with early years and foundation uh, and year one using balloons because actually it um, makes it non-intrusive and it's quite good for making sure they have fun but learn some skills as well. Um, the sponge balls are really good because actually it makes sure that the arms don't get a bit sore once they get started in contact. There are a few issues with volleyball and the rebounding element does allow for uh, students to feel sore arms and obviously that becomes a behaviour management situation. Do not worry, it's like any muscle, if you work it enough, the uh, red arms and all of those things will stop. Cones, we all have cones in the department. The cones are mainly for target area practice, it's mainly for dividing courts up, anything like that. And a net, you can suitably adapt a net. If you have badminton nets, brilliant. If you have uh, an outdoor net, amazing. If you don't have anything, piece of string with a few pe other pieces of string hanging down will do as long as they know it just needs to go over that part. Hoops are really good for targeting, it's also really good for if you put on the wall with chalk, anything like that where they can start volleying high and you can draw square boxes and it's non-intrusive as well using chalk. As we said equipment doesn't need to be fancy, doesn't need to be top of the range, just something which resembles a lighter ball so they can use it to play some volleyball. One of the simple things about volleyball is actually there's not many shots that need to be learned. Everything that you will learn, see on this slide, you've got four shots there, everything can be adapted and improved to make easier or harder. So. What we have there is the serve, which is normally underarm in uh, primary school. You can try overarm, but again, I would suggest doing that with more f year fives and sixes because of the timing issue with an overarm serve. Underarm serves, you take out the timing issue because you don't actually have to throw the ball up. You just let it hit out of your hand. Um, the volley and set. This is the main shot I would teach. And I'll definitely focus a lot of time on it because you can make any game happen using a volley or a set. The reason why I put volley slash set is because volley is the actual shot and the set is how you position the shot. They have a setter in volleyball, that is the person who is almost like the playmaker. So 
the person who will touch the second ball and spread it so they can do an attacking hit. Um, the volley is quite simple and there are videos after this so you can see how it is done. The dig is a more difficult skill. It does not transfer. The, unless you can prove otherwise, I don't believe it transfers to other sports. Um, I would normally do it for year five and six. If you have got a group that has started quite early on on volleyball, you might be able to do it in year three and four. That is where you're going to get the sore arm issue situation when lots of contacts on the ball. Uh, it is a difficult skill but when it is used well games are improved by 100% from the volley. Finally a spike or a hit is mainly for year five and six due to safety uh, but three and fours can do it when you just do technique. I wouldn't do it over a net because you'd have to have a very low net for them to hit it over. Year fives and sixes always set the uh, net height so they do have to jump and hit it. If you don't do that, then people are probably going to get hit in the face when the ball gets done. Um, when you start thinking about it, you've got 2v2s, 3v3s, and actually all of those games can be done through a catch throw basis. Try and teach always playing the volley above the head and always playing the dig below the belly button and that's quite a simple way to start. As an early sport games are always the uh, part where you dread because you know everything you have done in that lesson where you've taught them the skills could go completely wrong. However in volleyball as you can see on this guide um, most of it is throwing and catching the reason why they do this is to bring control in and make the games look better and also make them understand how to build gameplay. Traditional volleyball, three touches per team and that can be one touch and over, two touch and over, three touch and over. Try and promote at least two touches in a team, which would be catch, pass it to a friend, throw it over. The catches at lower level especially you looking at your year ones, twos and threes can be just catch anywhere, they can turn around, they just can't move with it like in something like netball. Um, when you get a bit higher you'll start being a little bit stricter so maybe you catch the ball above your head or you catch it with straight arms as if in a digging position and that will make them transfer into the volley and the dig quite easily. The when it says here on 9 to 10, where it says setting after the ball bounces off the ground, don't worry about that. If you want to do any conditions in your game where you allow them a bounce, because that allows them extra time. If you do it where they have six touches per side, anything like that is fine at this age level because you are conditioning the games to improve success. This is the beauty of volleyball. A game can still happen without it being strictly to the letter of the law. So I'd say just catch throw for key stage one and maybe year threes and fours, that's down to you. Um, the throw with the underhand serve as well, that is really good. And now give, always give them a double chance. Normally in volleyball you only get one chance, give them at least two chances because it is a tough skill. When you've got your high ability, try and make them work on the three touch basis because that will make their game much better. And I would say this 10 to 12 one, this is only your transition and also for your extremely talented students. At that point, they would be at a club hopefully because uh, 3v3, 4v4 and 6 on 6 is really difficult. Um, you always want to make sure there are opportunities to develop and Volleyball England is very good at that. They have got courses for teachers, they have got young leaders courses, everything that you can put in they can provide. However, for the area it's always good to have a few schools together to book one of these courses in. All they'll need is a sports hall or if you can find one in maybe the secondaries then as long as you organise it, they'll be happy to provide a coach. 
Um, resource packs are really good. There are links underneath there. There are lots of game cards. Really easy planning because they'll give you your developments, how to do the shots and how to progress it into mini games as well. Most of the courses that happen are about four hours long so you don't lose any time out of it but actually you do learn a lot and you get a lot of upskill. Most of them have a practical element in it. You don't have to be any good but it's really good for understanding how students will feel. Uh, the clubs I've put down there, I've got um, Plymouth Mayflower Volleyball Club, PMBC. That's a really good club for developing youngsters. They put them into the junior competitions. They have a development all the way through to a senior level where they have a National League ladies team. Extra Storm, you might have to type their name into Facebook because their website isn't very good at the moment. So actually their Facebook page is much better. They also develop all the way from juniors upwards and they put them into developmental leagues. Finally, Academy Beach Sport, it is a bit further away for some of you, it might be close for some others, but it is in North Devon and it has got a big history of making sure that students who are really love the game get involved really young and they can develop them all the way through. It is the club that I have been part of most of my life and they have had over 40 athletes play for the junior uh, England sides and now they have got three who are out in America as well. Any information you need more from that, please feel free to message me. So as I've said, I'm gonna talk about how we do each of the skills. Teaching the serve is, like I said, the only skill where you have 100% control. After this slide, there was a video of me showing it as well. I just thought I'd have a voiceover one as well. The four teaching points, the rock, the arms, the ball, and the pop quite simple one to do left foot forward right foot back for right handed and if you're uh, left handed you put your right foot forward and you put your left foot back you'll make sure that you start your weight on your back leg and you rock forward it's quite a simple motion which you use in other sports however it can easily be the difference between a successful serve and an unsuccessful serve knowing these four points are really quick and easy corrections that you can give students. Um, the arms, always uh, hold the ball with your left hand if you are right handed or use your right hand if you are left handed and have the opposite arm straight back. The reason why we use a straight arm because it's like a pendulum. If you can uh, have a good lever, swing it through and make contact, you'll get more power. The ball, when balancing the ball, it, your left hand it should not be thrown up. It is quite hard because sometimes the ball can be quite big. You can often try and get them to practice it in warm-ups, everything like that. Do not throw the ball on an underarm serve because that will add timing and normally will uh, be an unsuccessful serve. So try and hit it out your hand or drop it onto the swing. Finally, the pop. I like to use the pop because it helps uh, students use an onomatopoeia like that to make sure that when they swing their arm, they're not just trying to whack it as hard as they can. They want it just to come off with a nice sound and with enough technique. Hello, today we're going to now learn how to do the serve. Now the serve is the starting point of any game, any netball game, and it's really important because it is the only shot in volleyball where they have 100% control of. Which means if we teach good technique, they should, at this level, be able to win lots of points just by having a serve that goes over. The serve we teach is the underarm serve, mainly. We can go on to overarm, but underarm is the most successful one and also promotes the most inclusive game. An underarm serve looks like this. So you bend down, your arms out, arms back here, and it'll swing through. I never throw the ball. The reason is, if you throw the ball, it makes it really difficult because the students then have to time it loads, and that's actually a really hard skill. So instead, I often promote either dropping it onto the hand or hitting it out of the hand like this. Obviously, you'll be using soft touch volleyball, sponge balls, anything like this. So hopefully, the students should be able to have a good grip onto that ball. If not, let them just hold it and balance it on the hand 
and you practice that as a warm up, walking around, balancing it on their hand. And that should promote good technique. Now, how we should stand. I am right handed, so I'll show you the right handed version. What it will be is your left foot will be forward, your right foot will be backwards. From there, you bend your knees and your left hand goes out and your right hand goes back. The reason we bend our knees is to make sure that we can promote height when we do the serve. If you stand up like that. Lots of students will even lean back like this, go forward like this, but their legs are still straight. So actually, they have no chance of that ball going high. So ball is out in front, ball is behind. You'll go from back leg to front leg movement. This is the rock. And you'll go like this, back leg to front leg, back leg to front leg. So from there, the arm comes through and you'll contact it either on this part of the wrist or this part of the wrist. Reason why I tend to try and promote this one, it's a bigger surface and also students tend to experience less pain because it's obviously a new rebound sport uh, from this part than this part. Make sure your thumb is pointing when you are doing it as well. Inside you could have some accidents, okay? So pointing that thumb. So again, Back foot, front foot, all the way through, go throw the ball, and you'll serve it like that. Again, any queries, any questions, please feel free to message me at the end of this video. I would always start with teaching the volley. The volley is one of those shots that you can make a game out of. Uh, anyway, whether it's a conditioned game, whether it's something like keep the balloon off the floor, the volley is that shot. Um, it is closely related to a chest pass where you come off the chest in like basketball, netball, anything like that, but it's just off your forehead. Triangle fingers. Um, don't be too strict on triangle, it can always be diamond. There is a video after this one as well showing exactly. Um, thumb and index fingers together, spread your fingers out over your head and obviously that links to teaching point three where you follow your arms through. When they contact the ball your knees should be bent and as soon as they contact and you push your arms you start pushing upwards. Um, bent knees allows for balance, it also allows for more power to be given. Hello, today I'm going to show you how to do the volley shot in volleyball and how we can teach it in primary schools really nicely and simply. So the first thing I'd like to show you is how you get them into position without a ball. And how that is, we'll start with our hands. A volley shot is one of the most important shots in the game. It's easiest to grasp because it's basically a chest pass off your forehead. And actually, at the level of primary school, there'll be lots of catch throwing and that's how we're gonna build our play up. However, still when they catch throw, they should know the technique of the volley. So, first part is the hands. You get them to hold their hands up like this. Then, get them to point their thumbs together. Point their index fingers together to make a triangle. Some might want to make a diamond. Do not worry about that. Don't be too picky. And then all you do, open the rest of your fingers, spread your hands out and put it on your forehead to look like a moose. That is the easiest way I have found to teach uh, students how to do the volley shot. And then, after that, they've got this one here, and you can do that in your warm up so they're running around, and then you go, volley position, or moose, and they'll get into that position, and you can check their technique out. After that, we have to think about what we do with our knees. Two ways to do it with our knees. You can either have your knees bent with one leg in front of the other, and that gives balance to when you push forwards, or do not worry if they go square on, almost like a tower of power in rugby, like this, and they can still push up like that. That is much better for being balanced and stable. However, this one is much better when promoting pushing forward on the volley. Now, after that, once you've got the ball, you practice there, and then they have to practice straightening their arms, 
because that is how they are going to make sure that volley goes forwards. After that, it's about practicing it. How I would do it is I'd get students to show you the shape of their hands. You'd put a ball into their hands and tell them to push against you a little bit with the volleyball. This is good demonstration to show all the other students how it should look and how that position allows them to push it. And then once they push to get to you a couple of times, let them just push as hard as they can and it'll probably go something like that. However, as long as it goes upwards, we have got a successful volley. Finally, what it should look like all together, ball comes in, they'll catch it on their forehead with their hand position, my knees are bent, one, two, and then they'll push the ball out. One, two, push the ball out. And you're really promoting pushing it high. Common mistakes. Students will catch it and bring it straight down to their chest. Early years, key stage one, don't worry too much about it. However, we're trying to get them to play the ball as high as possible because in when you go further in volleyball, you'll get called up for anything down here. Other common mistake, when they catch it, they try and catch it behind them like this because they're football backgrounds normally, or netball shoulder passes, anything like that. So you need to make sure that when they do this, you tell them to scoot their feet and make sure they can see the ball at all times. Last common mistake is a lot of uh, students will then play the ball and they'll play it downwards or even sideways really powerfully. Tell them to aim for a high target. So in your sports hall, you might have a basketball hoop. It has to go higher than the basketball hoop. Because the balls are light, they'll go up, but they'll also come down quite well as well. Any other information, feel free to message me at the end of this video. Thank you. Uh, the dig is a difficult skill, but when you teach it right, it makes games 100% better. Um, ready position. This should be taught quite quickly and quite easily. All it is, is basically having your knees bent, looking upwards, having your arms out, and I call it jazz hands. Jazz hands is easy because it means that students know that their hands need to be in front of them, and that's the main reason is that if they're in front, they can go down to a dig or up to a volley really quick. The grip, the easiest uh, found is making a fist with the right and dominant hand and wrapping it around the other. Again, there is a video to show this. It is easier to see in a video than in writing, so please make sure you watch that if you'd like to know the technique. Finally, the contact point. Contact point is always on the forearm. This is where that you get those sore points from students, but they can wear jumpers, anything like that. The further up their arm, the more you lose power. Hello, okay, we're going to now learn how to do the dig shot in volleyball. Now, the dig shot's a really difficult shot. It does not relate to anything in any other sport, really. If you can think of something, feel free to invest in me because I love using examples of what it relates to. However, when you do the dig shot, I would normally promote this around about year four, five, six. It'll be quite difficult with key stage one and early years because it does tend to sting the arms at first even with soft touches, and also it requires a lot of timing. Now timing is really difficult to do, however we can break it down, make it a lot easier. To start off, what you'll do, you need to learn the basic ready position. In volleyball, what we call a ready position, is because when the other team is serving, you've got to look like a volleyball player. So I always do it as jazz hands, so you have your tower power position where you Short, uh, knees and hips and shoulders are all in line with each other. You bend your knees and your back, you're looking up right, right so you can see your chest. And here we have our jazz hand. Get them to shake you around. Again, you can use that in a warm up where you run around and every time you shout stop, they have to get into their jazz hand position. And it's almost like a musical statues type game. After you've gotten to there, you're in your ready position. You have to learn the grip. There's two ways to do the grip. The one that I found easiest to teach, if you make a fist with your dominant or writing hand, then you get the other hand, you wrap it around, finally you finish with pointing your thumbs. How that looks from this angle is dominant hand, wrap it around, point your thumbs, and you see I've got straight arms. 
Common mistakes. Students will interlock fingers. Now, it's a bad habit to teach them because when you get into high level volleyball, when you get to secondary school, anything like that, there's more power in the game. And if your fingers are locked like this, there's nowhere that they, they can go when the ball hits them, which obviously will result in an injury. So fist, wrap around, point your thumb, straighten your arms, and that is your platform. You should be hitting the ball around about this area here on the arms. It can, it's fine here. Up here takes all the power out of the dip. And another way to do it, just in case some students find it difficult that way, get your dominant hand, put it on top of your non-dominant hand. Then you curl your thumbs together and that will be your platform. This one's easier for when you contact for the students to release it, which actually makes them feel safer. So we've got our ready position, our jazz hands, we've got our grip where we've got straight arms, and now we need to see what it looks like as a shot. What it will do, you'll probably start them off either on their knees, so they're just focusing on the platform and shrugging like this, because the, your arms should never go higher than your shoulder level. If they go backwards, the ball will go backwards normally. Obviously, we want the arms higher than here, so they should promote that slight movement towards here as a shoulder strike. All the way through, it looks like this. Tiny knee movement, tiny arm movement, and the ball should go up. Again, we're promoting height, so think about basketball hoops, something like that, where they can try and get it over that height because height creates time and time creates opportunity in the games. Any questions, feel free to uh, message me after this video. Thank you. So spike is a difficult, difficult skill because of the timing involved. But again, it's a fun activity and you don't need to have that much success because you will get success going on in secondary school if they carry it on. Um, like I said there, the night Usain Bolt tick, it's crazy, but the students these days don't really know who Usain Bolt is from my experience. So I have changed it to a Nike tick. However, it should look like that. Your dominant arm is behind and your other arm is aiming in front. Uh, 45 degree angle upwards, that's only a rough guide. Obviously, they, as long as they're pointing upwards and over the net, that'll do a job. Finally, the contact. It should be a flat hand and should contact the bottom of the hand onto the forehand arm and then you swing through. The jump needs to be taught as a separate element. There are lots of little activities where students have high success and then after that they need lots of practice time. Hello and we are going to learn how to do the spike or the hit in volleyball. This shot requires a lot of timing, so actually it is much harder to teach in primary school. And actually, normally most kids don't get to access it until they get to secondary. However, if you have a good bunch of students who have learned all the way from early years, key stage one, you might be able to get onto this in year fours at the very, very lowest, year fives and sixes. But it is one of the most fun. Students watch have watched volleyball and they'll see that actually spiking the ball is the most fun part. So we have to learn how to do our position and our position is built up in a few stages. The first stage that you will have is your spike position. Now the issue with the spike position is I used to sell it as you say bolt, students don't know who you say bolt is so now sell it as a uh, night tip. And what it is, you've got your arms and you, you look like a night tip with your right arm back here, left arm forward. Left arm is your aiming arm, right arm is your hitting arm. You're almost saluting your ear at the back, but your hands are just slightly apart, fingers apart there. From here, you'll point your elbow. So from here, you'll point your elbow, so it comes through, and then you swing. This arm should be bent from here, and then as you contact the ball, straight, and it comes all the way through. So all the way through looks like one, two, three. And that is how I would teach it.
get them into that position, and then you'd get a partner to hold the ball like this. Your other partner will stand opposite, practice that position with their left hand over, their aiming hand over the ball, and they will swing through, and as their hand gets to about here, their partner will drop it, and the hitter will be able to contact and hit it into the floor. Lots of this relies on having good technique, so feel free to do that for as long as you can. If it bounces straight down and up, they've hit it perfectly. If it goes to the side, it's because they've hit it part of the ball. If it goes forwards because they're leaning forward too much. If it hit it backwards, it's because they're leaning back too much. They are your common mistakes. Now, when we get into um, teaching how we hit the ball at jumping, I'd always teach them how to make sure they beat the ball at the highest point. So bear with me a second. This activity, you'd have a partner, they will throw the ball as high as they can. If your student can't feed the ball very well, you might have to teach them how to throw a ball and feed it where there's consistency. This will help you in other lessons as well, so it's worth dedicating some time on how to feed the volleyball. So what it should be is a two-hand feed, throw it up in the air, shut about two metres ahead of you as high as they can. And the other student will come in and try and run and catch it. Obviously I don't have a partner so this might look a little bit different. So I'll throw it up, I'll try and run and catch it at its highest point. What I did, I jumped from two feet and the footwork for it, if you're right handed, is left, right, left, up. If you're left handed, it is right, left, right, up. But you see that my feet always finish next to each other. If they finish like this, their momentum is going to take them forward, and that would be dangerous in a game of volleyball because you could go through the net. So we've learned the hitting position, we have learned the jumping. Then you have to try and combine them. That's the hardest bit. And what I'd do normally is get them lined up, and you and a teaching assistant, or you and some uh, good feeders in the group, will throw the ball up in the air, and they'll come in, run, jump, hit it, and I'd probably do this without a net at first, and then progress onto the net. All it is to get the feel, common mistakes, I call it dinosaur arm, they hit from down here, other mistakes is they run in front of the ball and they try and hit it from back here, and let them make their mistakes and you just correct them as you go through, maybe every couple of minutes, bring them all in, say these are common mistakes, can we fix it? Year five and six should be able to coach themselves, which is quite good as well. All right, any question, feel free to message me. Thank you.